evening everybody so i am dr srinivas sinde so today we are here on facebook live so uh, for a very important topic of uh, living with lymphoma so today we have a very senior consultant and a reputed onco- uh, hematologist and oncologist from india dr sham agarwal who is a senior consultant and chairperson and director at the department of uh, medical oncology at sir gangaram hospital so he has been uh, since 1997 so uh, he has completed his uh, medical college uh, graduation from rohtak medical college and also his professional trainings from uh, yukla uh, los angeles st vincent hospitals university of urns aims and uh, other he has been actively uh, participating in various clinical trials and uh, <laughs> experience in uh, conducting various clinical trials and bone marrow transplant so i would like to welcome dr sham agrawal on behalf uh, of all of us uh, to proceed to the further uh, talk on hodgkin's uh, lymphoma thank you very much and i will dr sham uh, thank you dr shrinivas uh, shinde for your kind words i welcome you all to this live uh, a uh, telecast of uh, awareness on lymphoma today is uh, world lymphoma awareness day that is 15th september and i along with my colleagues uh, dr shrinivas and dr sachin minhas uh, who is the uh, research worker uh, uh, phd uh, post phd with uh, with me uh, bringing you greetings from sir gangaram hospital so as was pointed out earlier we have been engaged in the management of patients with lymphoma hodgkins and non hodgkins uh, for the last over 30 to 35 years and we have seen uh, several several uh, new uh, developments in the field of uh, uh, non hodgkins and hodgkins disease so on this uh, lymphoma awareness day uh, we would like to share our thoughts with you and uh, try and uh, bring you update as to uh, what is happening in the field of uh, lymphoma in the world uh, so the idea is to disseminate knowledge and uh, uh, dr shrinivas and dr sachin uh, will moderate the question answer session at the end of uh, my speech so i will uh, get started with the uh, slides uh, so as i said uh, we bring greetings from sir gangaram hospital and i'm thankful to horizon uh, a conference uh, who's hosting this uh, program so next slide please so what are we going to discuss so i think you have to understand that lymphoma is not one disease lymphomas are not the same disease it is very important to understand uh, and the type and the grade of lymphoma as is depicted by the pathologist dictates the treatment and the long term outcome so these two statements are very very important because uh, depending on the pathology uh, the grade is decided and that dictates the treatment so as i said stage of the lymphoma again is very critical as for any malignancy so i am introducing the word malignancy or cancer here because lymphoma is uh, considered to be a malignant disorder of the lymph nodes which means that it is arising from the lymph nodes as i will show you from the neck from the axilla and from the uh, inguinal region and even in the abdomen so the subtype of uh, the disease uh, is not uniform and that's what i said in the first statement that all lymphomas are not the same another important thing which you have to remember uh, that there is no predictability in a given patient about the outcome or the behavior of the disease so that is where the science even till date in 2020 2020 lacks the ability to predict that this particular patient will be cured and this particular patient will not be cured however in the next statement i make here that if you are detected in early stage stage 1 and 2 uh then you are looking at a curable cancer in 90 to 95% so which means that if you are diagnosed in stage 1 and 2 hodgkin or non hodgkin lymphoma 95 out of 100 times one patient will be cured but if the stage is more than stage 3 and 4 
well then you have still a chance of cure but then the chances go down to 60 to 80 percent and you have to still understand that we cannot predict in the beginning who is going to be cured and who is not going to be cured so we treat the same patient or all patients as per international guidelines which are for example laid down by nccn or by esmo or by nice etc and even the indian guidelines are there and 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 we expect and we hope uh, that the patients are cured next please next slide so this is a you know a busy slide just to show that as i said uh, you can have lymphomas of non hodgkins i first focus on non hodgkin that can be arising from the b lymphocytes or t lymphocytes and as you can see there are more than 30 subtypes of lymphomas and the treatment for each type of lymphoma is going to be different and this diagnosis what type of lymphoma one patient has is purely and purely the prerogative of the pathologist and that depends on the staining and the biopsy which is critical so biopsy for the patient is important and is essential before you start any treatment for non hodgkins lymphoma unless there is an emergency where the patient comes in a very sick stage uh, where we can perhaps uh, rely on an fnac or a needle test next please so in order for us to diagnose non hodgkins lymphoma as i said morphology which comes from the biopsy so ideally a full lymph node should be removed and that gives the pathologist the full material where they can do the immunohistochemistry and if needed flow cytometry and even certain other tests like cytogenetics or fish test these are technical words uh, which are there with the pathologist and the whole idea of doing these tests is to identify what precisely is the type of lymphoma which a particular patient has which will determine the treatment of that particular individual next please so you can see here uh, you have the b cell type of lymphoma in more than 90% um, of the patients t cell is 5 to 10% and diffuse large b cell lymphoma is the most common type and these are the other uh, uncommon types like follicular i'll talk about those mantle cell i'll talk about and the uh, indolent or the uh, cll or sll so th these are the you know various subtypes i can't go into the detail because of the paucity of time next please so this is the important slide which tells you how to stage a patient with lymphoma when you have the biopsy diagnosis for example a patient comes with uh, nodes in the neck which are enlarged you do a biopsy and the pathologist says that the patient has non hodgkins lymphoma then you have to see what stage of lymphoma it is so if it is only one group of lymph nodes involved on one side of the diaphragm then it is stage 1 if there are two or more than two groups of lymph nodes but on the same side of the diaphragm stage 2 so these two stages as i told you if you have a patient with lymphoma in these two stages nearly 90 to 95% will get cured however if you have disease on both sides of diaphragm it is called stage 3 and if for example stage 4 is there when you have disease involving the bones liver bone marrow or other parts of the body then it is called stage 4 so diaphragm is one issue and the other issue is the other uh, organs involvement which which gives you the staging next please so now you can see uh, various types of lymphomas have uh, various five year survival which is termed as cure so diffuse large b cell as i showed you is the commonest type i think this is a little old slide but then 60 percent of these patients can be cured i'll show you later but the other types of lymphomas can live for a longer time especially the low grade lymphomas which i'll just come to next please so you don't have to worry about the diagnosis of lymphoma too much because majority of the patients go on to live for five years and beyond so this is a detailed kind of pathology slide to show this is the cells look like i'll not go into the detail next please so now coming to the staging part so once is you got a diagnosis of lymphoma a pet ct scan is desirable today to diagnose and do the staging as you can see these yellow spots these are the nodes which are enlarged in the abdomen and in the chest so this basically will make this patient as at least stage 3 
and the bone marrow test is also important for all patients of non hodgkin's lymphoma for staging purposes but important to remember that pet ct scan is an important tool uh, to look at the nodal involvement now you can see uh, these are the uh, axillary nodes and this is the neck node next please so they light up like this so this is the uh, you know the chemotherapy which we do for most of the patients of non hodgkin's lymphoma and this is an old slide in which chop this is a four drug regime cyclophosphamide vincristine uh, adriamycin and prednisolone and you can see a three year estimate of around a uh, 54% which means that if you treat 100 patients so three year uh, survival for these patients will be to the tune of 54% this is when you use only chop like regimen in which you have four drugs chop the other protocols they don't offer any advantage and therefore chop has become the standard of care for all patients of non hodgkins lymphoma particularly dlbcl type next please so now there is some uh, detailing going on although it has not impacted the treatment uh, based on certain further immunohistochemical stains you can divide them into germ cell type or activated b cell type where the results can be little different this is theoretical but let's go on to the next slide so now you can see depending on the cd10 staging and certain bcl6 and mum1 staging uh, or typing on the immunohistochemistry Uh, GCB type does better than as compared to non-GCB type, but the treatment for both is still uh, R chop, as I, as I'll just tell you. Next, please. So now you know about 20-25 years ago, uh, it came the understanding of the CD20, which is a, a target which is present on the B cells from where the DLBCL arises, and then came this particular drug, uh, which is called the monoclonal antibody rituximab. so this brought in a new agent uh, which changed uh, the thinking of treatment of dlbcl next please and this is how it changed all over rituximab which is the monoclonal antibody against cd20 when combined with chop regimen so the results are better than as compared to chop alone and since last 25 years uh, the addition of rituximab to chop has become the standard of care and technically the doctors call this as r chop now for all patients of dlbcl and you can see the survival is a shade better so from 55% the cure rate has gone up to nearly 65% that means still unfortunately 35% patients will still relapse but they can still be salvaged as i will show you next please so this is another concept in uh, you know international prognostic index depending upon the ldh depending upon the b symptoms and so on so if somebody has no bad symptoms then their survival is much better than as compared to patients uh, who have five uh, bad symptoms or signs so this is another staging system to to devise uh, the the prognosis of a given patient but then uh, the treatment still remains r chop today next please so now this is the role of uh, autologous bone marrow transplantation or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation this is what i said that 35% patients will be relapsing and then you subject them to a second line chemotherapy followed by autologous transplant and as you can see nearly 50 to 60% of patients can still be cured this is you know uh, 60 months which is 5 years 75 months which is more than 6 years so after salvage after salvage uh, transplant uh, out of those 35 nearly uh, 50% will be cured so which means that even in stage 3 and 4 nearly 80 to 85% patients uh, will be able to achieve uh, a cure so which is a fairly uh, good number at this point in time next please so i think this is uh, what i said that you can salvage nearly uh, 50% i think we can go to the next slide so this is to again to show that patients uh, you know nearly 50 60% can be salvaged by autologous stem cell transplant in diffuse large b cell lymphoma next please so i think we'll skip this slide next please uh, i think next okay so now coming to the next type of lymphoma which is a follicular lymphoma uh, i think this is what the pathology looks like so D DLBCL or diffuse large B cell lymphoma 
is an aggressive lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma is a low grade or an indolent lymphoma. Next, please. So it grows very slowly. So this is, uh, you know, uh, T14, 18 translocation is there between 14 and 18 chromosome. And this is how the follicles look like in the, in the pathology. Next, please. So you can grade the follicular lymphoma depending on the centroblast. So that's what I am showing these slides because the pathologist has a very, very critical role. So if your pathologist is not good, well, then there can be a, a mishap, you know, a grade one can be graded as grade three or grade three can be graded as grade one because the treatment is different for grade 3A and 3B and even a grade four. So therefore, it is very, very critical to have a good pathologist to look at the lymphoma slides so that you get the correct diagnosis. Next, please. So again, uh, these are some of the uh, features, uh, which is the International Prognostic Index, like the age, the stage, uh, the LDH levels, hemoglobin, and depending upon these features, again, the outcome of the patient can be different. If you have zero features, then the 10-year survival is 70%. If there are more features, bad features, poor prognosis, 36 months or 36% will survive at 10 years. Next, please. So again, this is to show you that people who have a good IPI, zero or one, well, they live longer than as compared to patients who have high IPI. Next, please. So let's skip these slides in the interest of time. Next. Okay, so now this is very important. So this is the treatment for follicular or indolent lymphoma. So if somebody has stage one or selected stage two, then you can cure them with radiation. So that is given with the curative intent. But by and large, 90% of the patients of indolent or follicular lymphoma are diagnosed in advanced stage, majority of the patients. And if they are asymptomatic, then you don't treat them. It is very difficult to convince a patient that you have a lymphoma and the doctor is saying, wait and watch. Because you cannot eradicate these indolent lymphomas and that is why you want to wait and watch because there are patients who can go on to live for four years, five years or longer without any treatment. Chemotherapy will give them trouble. So that is why we want to withhold the chemotherapy until they become symptomatic. So again, you have the bendamustine and rituximab, which is another drug along with rituximab because most of these are B cells or CD20 positive. Uh, however, we can use other regimens also. So, but benda rituximab has become the standard of care for low-grade lymphomas. Next, please. So, this you can see uh, for, you know, you see this is the initial treatment for all patients. Nearly 18% of the patients will have observation, means wait and watch. Don't do nothing. And patients, for example, chemotherapy with rituximab is given to nearly, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70%. Some patients are also given rituximab. So, Indolent lymphoma is a separate group where slow treatment uh, can lead to a long life which could exceed beyond 10 years or 20 years even. Next, please. So there is a role of uh, rituximab maintenance in follicular lymphoma, as you can see. So you give only rituximab, which is not chemo, at a three-monthly interval. And this goes on for at least uh, two to three years. And these patients can live longer. Next, please. So for relapsed disease, we have several lines of treatment, uh, like, you know, as I said, bendamustine, then you can have RCHOP, then you have uh, RDAP and RICE and so many other treatments, including transplantation, which can be given in a sequential fashion to prolong the life of a given individual. So indolent lymphomas cannot be cured, but people live a normal life uh, for long periods of time, by and large. Predictability is not there, which is another, which is a big issue, which I said in the first slide. Next, please. So you can see, uh, you know, the median survival is 13.5 years uh, for patients who undergo transplant for follicular lymphoma. So they can go on for long periods of time with normal quality of life. Next, please. So I think skip these slides. Next. Next, please. Next. Okay. So this is one more type of lymphoma, which is called mantle cell lymphoma, uh, which is usually in uh, advanced stage. And people, for example, who have GI involvement, extra nodal involvement, so then you should think of mental cell lymphoma. And there is an 1114 translocation in the chromosome with male predominance. 
So, you know, pathologist has to diagnose mental cell lymphoma based on the CD5 and CD23 staining. Next, please. So this is uh, to show you the prognosis. Again, uh, there is a scoring system uh, on which the patient's survival is there. But the mental cell lymphoma is considered to be an aggressive lymphoma. Next, please. So you can see uh, uh, the, the current uh, thinking uh, for mental cell lymphoma for aggressive type is R-CHOP alternating with R-DAP. Or some people use this uh, hyper CVAD, which is another complicated regimen. But I think R chop alternating with R uh, is becoming the standard of care uh, for patients with mantle cell lymphoma. And in certain cases, like for follicular lymphoma, one can do wait and watch. Again, that comes from the pathology, uh, you know, a particular stain called the SOX2 uh, stain, uh, where you can decide whether you can wait and watch. But by and large, mantle cell lymphoma is an aggressive disease, and there is a role of autologous transplantation uh, for, for upfront for patients in mental cell lymphoma, which we need to discuss case by case basis. Next, please. So when they relapse, uh, then you do have uh, other drugs. For example, I'll talk about the BTK inhibitors, but then, then you have several drugs which are available, including transplantation in the end. Next, please. So this is the role of transplantation. Again, 50% patients can be cured. Next, please. So uh, this is another type of lymphoma. Now coming to the T cell types, a T cell lymphoma is an aggressive lymphoma by and large. They are not that chemosensitive than as compared to B cell lymphomas. But then uh, the treatment remains chop, and uh, depending on the stage, the results are not that good. Next, please. So this is again you see the curves, you know, coming down to 30 percent, 40 percent, and uh, depending upon the subtypes, uh, these are not as good as the B cell type. But fortunately. T-cell lymphoma is only 5% or so of all the lymphomas. 95% are B-cell types. Next, please. So we'll skip these treatments. Next. So these are some of the salvage regimes. If the R-CHOP has failed, then these are other combinations like uh, ifosomide, uh, carboplatinum or cisplatinum or etoposide. And these are cytarabine-based or platinum and gemcitabine-based. Uh, we have these new drugs like ibrutinib, lenalidomide, rituximab, bendamustine. So you have several drugs to offer to these patients uh, you know, and, and offer a bone marrow transplant if they have failed uh, the initial regime, which is the R-CHOP regime. Next, please. So I think, uh, next slide, please. We'll skip this. Okay, now, so I think there are so many types. I'll just come to the next slide also. But I think for lay people, it is important to also understand the previous slide, that what are the side effects of chemotherapy. Uh, so, you know, nausea and vomiting have come down quite a bit with the availability of newer um, anti-nausea drugs, uh, particularly uh, drugs like uh, Granicetron and even um, Akinzio, which is available. Bone marrow suppression is an important side effect in which the TLC goes down or white blood cells go down and these patients' immunity go down and they are prone to getting uh, infections, especially in the first 10 days. Oral ulcers and diarrhea as a result of chemotherapy can be bothersome in the first 7 to 10 days. Uh, some nail changes, darkening of the skin, alopecia or hair loss. It is very important to understand the cardiotoxicity and therefore all patients have to have an echocardiogram before we give them R-CHOP, which contains adriamycin, which is a cardiotoxic drug. And for young people, infertility is important. And therefore, you need to cryopreserve the sperms or ova before we uh, give them chemotherapy because a small percentage of patients can lose their fertility due to chemotherapy. Because chemotherapy is acting on dividing cells. It doesn't differentiate between cancer and the normal cells. And that is why all this toxicity is there. Next, please. But it's all reversible by and large. So lymphoma can affect any part of the body. Uh, brain lymphoma is, again, curable. But then the treatment is different. For example, high-dose methotrexate. Testicular lymphoma involving testes is a separate entity in which there is role of uh, brain uh, prevention like intrathecal chemo, stomach and intestinal uh, lymphomas are usually diagnosed after operation 
and they still need uh, you know our chop like regimen for diffuse large b cell lymphoma similarly for head and neck so you know the point to make is that lymphoma can involve any part of the body next please and you have to treat them appropriately so now an important question which patients ask and we have been saying that there is lack of predictability so how do you monitor these patients so as i showed you that you do the pet ct in the beginning at the end of three or four cycles and then at the end of six cycles and pet ct is the ultimate and if you have achieved a normal pet scan so then you expect that everybody should be cured but unfortunately as i said the cure is only there in around 60% of the patients in the first line r chop so why do the relapse because the pet ct can only detect tumors which are bigger than 5 mm and the problem is that the 5 mm or more bigger tumor contain more than 100000 or even 1 million cells so there is no technique to detect the presence or absence of a uh, 100000 or a million cells so if there is uh, a, a small 1000 cells or 10000 cells lingering on in the body of a patient which is called microscopic disease and that cannot be picked up by a pet ct or any investigation in the world they gradually grow bigger and they usually are responsible for relapse in the 2 years time so you know so that is the fallacy of pet ct and that is the inability of the doctor to tell you that you are cured and you only have to follow up every 6 months or so and if you don't relapse for 2 to 5 years then we tell you that you are cured of this disease next please so the final slide is on hodgkins lymphoma uh, which is uh, the other type of lymphoma uh, again uh, you see early stage uh, lymphoma is stage 1 and 2 when the disease is confined to uh, one or two node areas and there again you do two to four cycles of chemotherapy followed by radiation and in this category you can expect to cure more than 90% early stage unfavorable especially if the node size is big there again the treatment is the same like the four cycles of chemo which is the standard abvd by and large four drug regime as you can see here followed by radiation and in patients who have advanced stage in which there is stage 3 and 4 or patients who have b symptoms like fever weight loss or sweating so there we give them six cycles of chemo and radiation to the bulky disease and uh, there you can expect to cure 60 to 80% and there is a role of interim pet ct as it is called that after two cycles of chemo you do a pet scan and that also can modify your treatment next please so i think uh, this is what i said uh, the follow up requires four to six monthly examination by blood reports x ray ultrasound and an appropriate uh, ct scan or a pet scan uh, next please so these are some of the new developments which have happened in the field of uh, a uh, non hodgkins or hodgkins lymphoma i told you about the diagnosis part gcb or germinal center type or activated b cell type but the treatment remains the same so ibrutinib is one drug which is now available for treatment of mental cell lymphoma in a relapsing patients linolidomide has been added to our chop but the results are not very clear so new antibodies like polatumtuzumab Uh, is going to be launched and it's available on compassionate use for non hodgkin lymphoma who have failed all standard chemotherapy drugs is an anti cd79 antibody at cetris or brentuximab is the drug for hodgkins unfortunately not available but people are using it uh, for upfront hodgkins also but it is very expensive at this point in time and uh, even for cd30 positive uh, uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma immune checkpoint inhibitors like nivolumab and pembrolizumab have done wonderfully well in hodgkins lymphoma relapse setting and and primary mediastinal b cell lymphoma so what i am trying trying to tell you is there are many many new developments in the field of hodgkins and non hodgkins lymphoma which can help you live a, a normal life good quality life and possibly provide you cure for more than 60 70 80% of the patients in, even in advanced stages first or second stage can be cured in over 90% so i think uh, na- next slide so i think uh, important points to remember are 
that all lymphomas are this is the same slide which i showed you first i just want to reiterate all lymphomas are not the same grading of lymphoma as determined uh, by the pathologist or the type of lymphoma is very very crucial it must be done uh, maybe two times uh, for all patients so that there is no confusion in the type of or the grade of lymphoma staging is very important um, different subtypes will have different treatment as i told you and uh, still predictability is not there and you can cure a lot of these patients next so i think i thank you for your kind attention on this uh, world lymphoma awareness day i wish you uh, good luck and uh, hope uh, that i've been able to uh, you know uh, explain to you in simple terms what lymphoma is how to stage and how to expect uh, the best outcome for a given patient with uh, hodgkin or non hodgkin lymphoma so uh, thanks and now over to the moderators dr sachin and dr shrinivas is there any questions from the audience well thank you dr shyam for such a wonderful talk am i audible yes you are yeah thank you sir so sir in the larger interest of patients i would like to ask a few questions uh go ahead are there any precautions that a patient needs to take uh, when he or she is undergoing the treatment yes so as i told you uh, chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment for patients of whether hodgkins or non hodgkins and as i explained that these chemotherapy drugs are acting on dividing cells because cancer cells are dividing so unfortunately these chemotherapy drugs do not differentiate between normal dividing cells and the cancer cells which are dividing so the dividing cells are present in various organs of our body for example our hair are growing so they will act on the hair follicles and be responsible for loss of hair which is called alopecia but the worst and the most important side effect is on the bone marrow because the wbcs they will go down and wbcs contain neutrophils which is the main fighting force uh, for preventing or treating the infections so once your wbcs go down as a result of chemotherapy so this patient will become prone to infections and that happens in the first 7 to 10 days after each dose of chemotherapy so you have to take precautions like you have to not take uh, uh, you know uh, fruits and vegetables because they can carry infection you have to uh, take cooked food and uh, packed food and packed uh, you know juices etc no fresh juices so because those can carry infection Se second or third point is that you should try and remain indoors for for the first seven days seven days or so because the more you go into crowded spaces you can got get infections so i think that is the most important precaution and the third or the final thing is people have to take high protein diet in order to build up their immunity so if you are a non veg you can take um, you know egg and other non vegetarian food but if you are a vegetarian uh, just stick to the milk and milk products so as to boost your immunity by taking a high protein diet like dry fruits right so these are some of the precautions which you know are there great sir thank you so uh, you have been treating um, a lymphoma for almost like 2 3 decade sir have you seen uh, a treat change in treatment let's say in the last 10 years have you observed how treatment has evolved and changed yeah so that's a very very interesting question yes things have have certainly improved as i showed you in the slides so you know before 1990 or so which is nearly 30 years ago right 1990 is 30 years ago so mm -hmm. chop four drug regimen regimen was the mainstay of treatment then in 90s came rituximab so you know our chop has still remained the bread and butter for most of the diffuse large b cell lymphomas yes as i showed you for say uh, for low grade lymphomas like follicular lymphoma bendamustin has been now incorporated as the first line treatment for mantle cell lymphoma we have our chop alternating with our dap so some improvements have taken place now the understanding of uh, brain lymphoma where you have high dose methotrexate as the first line right. treatment now has now become the standard of care for 15 to 20 years 
so some areas have improved but if you ask me for diffuse large b cell lymphoma our chop has still remained the standard of care which actually is the bulk of the non hodgkins lymphoma this is about non hodgkins lymphoma now but hodgkins disease hodgkins lymphoma which is a different type of lymphoma so abvd four drugs adriamycin bleomycin vindblastin dtic you know has remained the bread and butter but in the last two years i told you about brentuximab so which right. the problem with abvd is it's a very good combination which is curing of almost 80 to 90% but then bleomycin the b in a very small tiny percent which could be 2% or 3% it causes lung damage and that lung damage is irreversible a person and it's a hypersensitivity reaction i have seen patients dying with bleomycin and it is so very sad to see a curable disease where bleomycin uh, causes death of an individual so you know what has happened is that brentuximab vedotin which is an anti cd30 antibody has come in but then it is so expensive it runs in lakhs of rupees so unfortunately not available in india so you know abvd still remains the standard of treatment number one the second regimen which has come in hodgkins disease is called a, a seven drug regimen ba cop regimen so you know in which you have seven drugs so this is kind of very aggressive protocol and it is reserved by and large for young fit patients who have say stage 4 disease i have used the ba cop regimen but you know the toxicity is profound it is not meant for patients for example who come from outstation uh, say from bihar or from punjab or haryana you know i mean it's it's a it's a cumbersome protocol and giving lot of suppression of immunity so but then it is a little better protocol uh, than abvd regimen but then people have to accept the toxicity uh, which you know uh, is the uh, point uh, although the cure may be 5% more or 3% more but then you have to cost see the cost benefit see the socio economic status of the individual before you choose the product so you know technically speaking for majority of the people for non hodgkins it is archop and for hodgkins it is uh, abvd regimen so which have which have come to stay with us but newer drugs are have come in as i told you in my last slide uh, like immune checkpoint inhibitors and uh, other agents right thank you sir sir uh, next generation sequencing now these days we get to hear about uh, uh, next generation sequencing in lot of cancer so is there any role that um, ngs can play in lymphoma so you know uh, since this is for meant for uh, you know lay people so next generation sequencing is a test in which uh, you can subject the tissue uh, to uh, sequencing gene sequencing in in a particular machine so when you uh, do that uh, the idea is to detect uh, genetic abnormalities in that particular tumor so unfortunately at this point in time uh we it is not a routine test to be recommended for uh, for patients of lymphoma and right. the problem is uh, you can perhaps identify the gene defect in the tumor cell but the actionable mutation is invariably not there and therefore uh, we are not promoting the ngs but i think there is a future there uh, for our ability because the now the science is so advanced that you take the tumor tissue and not only the tumor tissue i have had patients where even the blood sample can be taken and that we call as liquid ngs so just take the blood sample and send it to the lab and the lab a person will tell you that these are the genes which are abnormal but the problem is you don't have uh, too many drugs which can target those gene mutations especially so for hodgkin and for non hodgkin lymphoma uh, the test is available test is available and i have done this test for a few patients but we haven't gotten a lead uh, where we can treat according to the gene mutation and salvage that patient right we can uh, uh, find the mutations but we don't have any medicines targeting these mutations so there is a uh, no point of that yeah so yeah so i mean so people mm -hmm. who can afford uh, we are doing it because the test is so readily available i mean at That's the price true. of 30 40 50000 in india it's it's mm -hmm. just available and the tissue is there 
and people are asking for it and sometimes we are doing it also but um, i'm i'm at the moment you know skeptical of a, a positive result um, to to get from right. ncs in lymphomas right so talking about genes sir so many of the patients may have this kind of question is it uh, genetically inherited let's say if i have it then my is what is the chance of my daughter or my son having it right so so you know uh, the the uh, one thing is uh, the incidence of lymphoma in our country is to the tune of nearly 50000 new cases develop uh, lymphoma each year and let me say this that if you look at the globocan and the icmr data the incidence is rising every year and that is particularly for non hodgkins and hodgkins both so we don't know uh, why this incidence is going high and not only in india even in the western countries so the linkage of the you know this this particular cancer is with say viruses and eb virus particularly has some role to play which we don't clearly understand so what i'm trying to say here is that this lymphoma is by and large not hereditary so if somebody has had it in his or her family or somebody's parent or mother or father or grandfather had it it is i think the the generation is at the same risk of getting this lymphoma as the normal uh, individual so this is considered to be an acquired illness it is not uh, inherited and it is not passed on to the generations by and large right thank you sir so my final question is sir even though we don't really know ki why it happens in the first place but still uh, would you like to suggest a few you know lifestyle changes that a person that a person can make to make his or her chances uh, you know uh, decrease the chance of developing this type of cancer right so you know there, there is no specific thing which we can tell but in general when we talk about cancers so if you are leading a normal healthy lifestyle which means that you are not eating a lot of junk food which you know a lot of youngsters today are doing that by going to mcdonalds and to pizza hut and to dominos i mean uh, what to talk my children i mean they are all fond of all this but then but that is not good because that gives you a lot of uh, you know fat which is there in that uh, Uh, pizza and etc etc which is in the cheese so mm-hmm. you are supposed to take uh, more of green leafy vegetables you are supposed to take more of fruits so now in the public uh, uh, you know schools private schools as i think you've seen the surveys obesity is becoming an issue because people are putting on weight and now that this lockdown is there the activity physical activity is missing so people are putting on weight left right and center so gaining weight obesity no activity sitting on the computers sitting on the cell phones gives you all this bad thing and no yep. green leafy vegetables no fruits and now on top of that if you add smoking and drinking etc for young adults so also remember that hodgkins and non hodgkins lymphoma is a disease of you know younger individuals 20 years 30 years 40 years so it is not a disease of elderly people by and large it is the disease of people between 15 to 20 to 50 years age group although hodgkins has a peak for an elderly people also but then by and large these are people who are in the productive age group so i think these are some of the precautions which people have to take when uh, to in order to avoid the occurrence of any malignancy including hodgkins and non hodgkins lymphoma great sir so uh, these are all the questions that i have uh, dr shrinivas uh, if you, he has any questions he may go further uh, am i audible yes dr shrinivas yes please go ahead uh, just i have a one question do we have any experience in lymphomas on immunotherapies do we have any patient such oh yes so you know hodgkins lymphoma is extremely extremely sensitive to immunotherapy and let me uh, tell you or remind you i think dr shrinivas was also involved in the treatment of that particular individual where this particular patient has undergone several lines of chemotherapy abvd ri yes. platinum based and bendamustine and so on 
and then this patient came to us dying in the ward with liver studded with cancer and this patient had bilirubin because the liver was totally failed and it has bilirubin of 7 8 9 and patient was unconscious this patient was given immunotherapy in the form of a drug called nivolumab and within a span of 5 days his bilirubin came down and he started walking on the 7th day this patient went on and on to live for at least 2 years beyond nivolumab number 1 case the second case who i can never forget and maybe he is listening to me he this patient had undergone two lines of chemotherapy patient had undergone bone marrow transplantation and even another line of chemotherapy including brentuximab <clears throat> that patient failed he was 27 years of age then and then we started using this nivolumab in that individual he took nivolumab 2 years he has absolutely normal pet scan for the last 3 years and i am proud of telling you that he got married and he's got a child now so immunotherapy in hodgkin's lymphoma can turn the entire trick in favor of the patient similar results of nivolumab or pembrolizumab can be achieved in primary d cell mediastinal lymphoma so but hodgkin's is such a success story for nivolumab and these immunotherapy drugs and now these drugs are now coming in the first line so the trials are ongoing at this point in time so there's a huge huge promise for the use of immune checkpoint inhibitors in hodgkin's lymphoma and you you must offer it to everybody when these patients have failed at the moment first or second line of chemotherapy okay thank you sir thank you very much so i have a final question uh, we are already short of time so post treatment uh, what uh, there could be a long term complications and what are the alarming signs uh, when patient should uh, immediately come to the hospital or follow up right so that's a very uh, good question of because uh, let me tell you uh, you know so as i said 50000 new cases are diagnosed mm-hmm. every year currently in india mm-hmm. and now you i told you that nearly 70% will be cured so 70% of 50000 is nearly 35000 people are living every year so now you count for the last 15 years so 35000 multiplied by say 20 years is 700000 people means 7 lakh indians 7 lakh indians are living with lymphoma cured lymphoma now so now you can imagine so they could be facing problems of chemotherapy and radiotherapy after 5 years 10 years 15 years so what are the problems which is what dr shrinivas asked are are long term problems of chemotherapy or radiation so now you know what has happened is so earlier radiotherapy was used a lot in, in you know in the neck lymphomas or because these lymphomas usually arise in the neck and in the axilla so when you do the radiation to the neck or to the axilla then radiation causes damage to the thyroid so patients were developing thyroid cancer after 10 years or 15 years number 1 patients breast ladies particularly the breast was exposed to radiotherapy and there was a high incidence of higher incidence of developing breast cancer similarly chemotherapy drugs they cause damage to the cells and those cell damage can lead to the development of cancers second cancers like acute leukemia after 15 years so the incidence has gone up a little not very high but 2 3% or so so second cancers thyroid cancers breast cancers are issues which one ha- or thyroid you know even thyroid can fail they you can have hypothyroidism as a result of thyroid uh, getting radiotherapy so i think we address the issue of infertility so which is another important issue because these drugs can damage the gonads or testes or ovary and the final uh, thought is on the heart because if somebody is given radiation to the left side of the axilla or the left side the heart is also exposed or the mediastinum is exposed so that can damage the heart so now what has happened is that 
I think we didn't go into the details for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So 20 years ago, as Dr. Sachin also asked, what are the changes you have seen? So earlier, people were giving six cycles of chemo. So now we have reduced the number of cycles to chemo to two, three or four because adriamycin is a cardiotoxic drug, number one. So when you reduce the number of cycles, the damage to heart is less. Number two, the techniques of radiotherapy to the mediastinum have become so refined that they spare the heart and therefore the heart damage doesn't occur in the long term. So, you know, these are some of the long-term side effects which we see with these chemotherapy and the radiation uh, agents. Especially, it, it is very helpful to all the practitioner, medical practitioner, students and also for the common public. So thank you very much and I would like to thank Dr. Sachin also for question uh, session and uh, especially Horizon for arranging this uh, uh, conference. Thank you very much. With this thank week, you. Thank you. And, thank, you. And thank you for listening and being patient. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.